Hi everyone, this page or this video has been a long time coming. This is page four in my art journal book and uh, I've already got pages one, two and three and it's about time I added page four. And you can see I've got lots and lots of different styles going on and lots and lots of different ideas for uh, creating tags and pockets and uh, it's turned into something where I'm actually using a bit like a scrapbook as well because I'm documenting things about my family and my memories. So I'm just having a quick look through and I want to create a couple of pockets and I'm going to have to remove a couple of pages. I chose this book specially because of the way it's bound in groups of pages and you'll find that there are stitches in between each of those groups of pages so I'm just looking for the centre of the next group of pages I want to work on and I'm going to remove them uh, so that I can um, be left with two pages out of the group and that way my book shouldn't get too thick by the time I've finished playing. So I'm just looking at the spine here to check where the next group of pages is. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and remove some pages. So I think I've worked it out now and I, it, as it happens this is a thin group of pages because I've already used um, one of them on the previous page so I'm just going to remove and carefully without breaking those stitches I'm just going to remove that center section of pages don't forget to keep these pages because you can use them for other things in your art journal and you will see me doing just that a little bit later on and then I can remove a second set so that, I'm doing it carefully because I don't want to break those stitches. If you break those stitches, then all of your pages are going to need to be glued back in, which kind of defeats the object. So as I work my way through this journal, I will be taking pages out as I go, depending on the page design that I've decided on. And hopefully at the end of it, I will have a book that I can still close. <laughs> So as I apply a layer of gesso to the top sides of each of my four pages, um, I'm going to uh, let you know that I'm going to be trying a paint transfer technique and this page is going to be about pets, uh, our pets, our family pets. Now we haven't had many pets because we've been in the forces so we've moved around a lot and it obviously isn't always fair to take pets with you. and. Um, so we've had cats and at the moment we have a dog and I wanted to do a little bit of journaling about that and so I'm going to create a page with a couple of pictures of my pets on and that's what I'm going to be using uh, or doing this paint transfer technique to attach their photographs to the page and I wanted to create a bit of an old plaster look and uh, it looks a little bit drastic and at one point I almost lost my nerve as you will see um, but I got there in the end I was quite happy with how the page turned out and that's the beauty of art journaling sometimes it's just a case of keep working until you end up with something you like so just got all my gesso in place and uh, everything's dry ready to begin now I've printed out a couple of photographs of our pets. So Simba and Bart, the two cats, are sadly no longer with us, uh, but Comet, the one with the arrow through his head, <laughs> he is still with us and going strong and uh, keeping us off our armchairs uh, and making sure that we get our exercise by taking him for a walk. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to start this technique by coating the two centre pages of my little set of pages uh, with some it's just slightly off-white acrylic paint. So instead of the gesso, I'm using the acrylic paint as the base layer. Now you may be, have been watching these videos and I've tried to keep a little bit of each of the pages uh, in each, uh, that's the print, should I say, of the pages showing. But because this technique is gonna use a lot of paint, I'm not gonna achieve that uh, on the actual page itself, but I'm going to put a little bit of the book page back onto the tags as you'll see. So I'm working in reverse, so I'm just deciding how to place the two photographs and they will be placed upside down on the page. One side of the page is going to be Comet and the other side is going to be Bart and Simba. So what I'm doing is creating little torn edges because I want to have the look of old plaster. You know, if you peel off uh, layers of paint or layers of paper from a wall, you get that uh, sort of old tattered 
edged look to wallpaper and things that's what this uh, look is about that's why I'm using this photo transfer technique and you'll see it works quite well although like I said I was a little bit scared that it wasn't going to work at one point so I'm just creating a really thick layer of paint a bit like thick butter and then I'm immediately pressing while it's all still nice and wet the first photograph that I want to use of Comet onto that paint so I'm being careful to remove the paint as I press hard with the bone folder to make sure that that photograph is well and truly stuck into that paint. So I'll get, you get a little bit of paint squishing out from the edges and I'm just removing that with a paper towel. And then I'm just working out where the second photograph is going to sit. Adding another thick layer of paint and again just ripping the edges of the photograph working quickly so I can get that stuck down making sure the paint's wet and sticking the photograph of Comet just that little bit younger when he first came home to our house so again giving you a good press down getting rid of the excess paint and then using my bone folder to make sure it's well pressed down and smoothed out on the page so you can see I'm using my piece of card to make sure that I don't get a ton of that paint squishing onto any other of my pages so it's quite a messy technique but it is quite a satisfying one and you can either allow it to dry naturally or do as I'm doing here and dry it off with a heat gun and then I'm repeating that process with my cats on the other side so a nice thick buttery layer of acrylic paint and then press your inkjet print print side down into the paint so you need to be a little bit careful although I'm definitely adding pressure to make sure that this is well adhered into that paint you don't want to press too hard so that you actually scrape the paper off the top because it will become wet and it will start to wrinkle so you do need to be firm but you know quite delicate in, in your handling of the paper so if you start to see a wrinkle you don't want to just skim that bone folder over the top of it press it out gently with your tissue and then you can press a little bit harder with your bone folder if you try to press hard with your bone folder and you've got wrinkles you may well rip your print and have to start again so again with the heat gun to dry everything off and everything needs to be bone dry before you can move on to the next step so once everything's dry I just made sure I got rid of all the excess paint before I moved on to the next step. And now I'm ready to reveal those prints. So you're going to be working with water so protect your pages underneath. Again I'm just using a piece of scrap card and you're going to need a pot of water. Mine's just white from the paint so it's not going to do any damage um, but if your paint uh, pot has dirty water in it, it's probably better to get fresh because otherwise you'll just stain your photographs. And you're going to wet the back of both of the prints. So a nice liberal coating of water and then you gradually start to rub the back of the paper away to reveal the print underneath. You can see those little pieces of paper, those little rolls of paper um, I'm not rubbing very hard, I'm rubbing quite gently and then just once the paper starts to come away you can sort of peel it off of the print. So if something looks a little bit stubborn just add a little bit of water with uh, your finger and then carry on with that little rubbing motion and you will gradually reveal your print below. Now because I've got two pieces here I'm going to start working on the second piece. So I'm just letting that soak through and gradually revealing both of the pictures. You can see I've got nice and covered in paint and gesso. So this definitely isn't a technique if you're someone who doesn't like to get their hands dirty. And once again, if I find any stubborn pieces, I'm just using the paintbrush to wet the print again and then carry on with that rubbing technique. 
I really love this technique. It's great for adhering prints perhaps to MDF or um, a wooden project. It's definitely something that doesn't have a precise finish and it does rely on you being uh, delicate uh, where you need to be. For instance, you could quite easily rub your print away from the page altogether if you are too heavy handed. And uh, perhaps if I created a hole in this print um, at a important point like the facial features of my pets it would be a bit ruined and I'd have to start again so I'm being a little bit careful particularly over the face area of my prints but I'm not too worried around the actual edges because I want it to look like it's uh, old paper that's blended into the book page so just reve revealing the print that's underneath and every now and again you'll see that you might get an area that looks like you've got a splodge of paint so these are the areas you just need to be a little bit more patient with and it's just where you've got a little bit of paint on your print and uh, you can just gradually uh, rub away at those areas and you will uh, gradually lift that little bit of area of uh, paint away from the image you can see I've got a little bit of a streak on Comet's picture at the top there running from his eye to his nose so I'll work on that in a moment. You can see how messy this is. Once you get to a point that you're happy with and I like to take a bit of kitchen roll and it almost acts like a little bit of a delicate um, sandpaper. So you can see I'm just using my finger now to just get under that little layer of paint and then rubbing it away. I was talking about the kitchen roll, I interrupted myself there um, because I immediately went to tackle uh, that little area of paint. So I use the dry kitchen roll once I've got the majority of uh, the paper that I want to release, release from the image and then I use it as a bit of a buff to get rid of all those little extra bits of paper and smooth everything out. Almost like a duster. So as I just work on those finer details, speed myself up a bit, um, I just wanted to also say that if you found that once your image was completely dry, it looked a little bit too cloudy, it just means that you haven't taken off enough of that paper from the top of your image. And it's quite all right to go back in with another little brush of water and just another little rub of your image to release a little bit more of that paper to reveal the image underneath. So I've now got my two images attached to my page and then I'm just drying them out and this is where you'll see how much more they fade. But I'm quite happy with the look of those so I'm not going to add any more water at this stage. I also took a little bit of sandpaper just to go over the edges of the paper and blend them into the book page. And then just taking it right around the outside edge. Again, I'm trying to make it look a little bit distressed, but not where the faces are. So keeping my sandpapering to the very edges of those prints. So I repeated that process and revealed the images of my cats on my second page. And now I'm ready to try and create the look of plaster. Now I have really had no idea how I was going to achieve this. I just knew the look that I wanted to go for. I wanted it to look a little bit like an old wall by the time I've finished and uh, to still be able to see the faces of my lovely pets on my page. So I've picked a couple of colours I want to work with. I've got a light blue, a pink and a sort of more of a burgundy shade of paint. And they're going to create my layers of paint through the ages if you like. If this was an old wall, they're previous colours that may have been painted onto the wall. So I'm starting out just by adding random lines of colour around the edges of my images and across that blank section in the middle. So because of the sandpapering, I've added a little bit of a hole to my page. So that's one of the good reasons for keeping the pages that you take out. And I'm just repairing that a little bit 
and uh, then carrying on with this old plaster technique that's what I'm calling it because it does end up looking a bit like that and I hope you'll agree so just adding little splodges of the pink and the blue and I'm actually going to be painting over all of this and then hopefully revealing some of that color underneath so again I'm coming in with that burgundy and making sure everything is dry ready to begin the top coat I just wanted to create a layer on top of the paint that I could wipe the next layer of paint away uh, to reveal the colours that are underneath. So over those painted little dashes of colour, I'm adding a layer of PVA glue. So I've got acrylic paint, a layer of PVA glue, and then I'm going to put acrylic paint on top. And then I'm going to rub that top coat away to reveal some of those colours underneath. At least that's the plan. So I'm just drying it off now and then I'm ready to add my second colour. So I remember at this point I was starting to panic a little bit about how this was actually going to turn out, but onwards and upwards hopefully, I'm adding the top coat of paint uh, when you dip it in the right colour, and it's kind of stone colour and I'm just going over everything that I've got previously and just trying to blend out the edges around the actual photographs of my pets. So a fairly thick layer of paint and then I'm just using a baby wipe to just blend in those edges a little bit more to make it look like those pictures of those cats are just peeking through all this old plaster. And then again, taking the wet wipe, I'm just partially drying the top coat. I'm not drying it all the way because I'm going to be scraping some of it off with a wet wipe in a moment. So I've just taken the wet wipe and I'm just revealing some of those colours underneath by rubbing some of that top colour away. And it's at this point that I completely lost it and turned off the camera and carried on working on the page thinking I was just going to trash it and that this would never be a video but actually looking at the page I like how it turned out I do think that I've achieved the look of old plaster so now I'm going to go back to the point where I previously left you um, and I'm going to talk you through the final stages of this <laughs> completely made up off the cuff technique got the base coat of those little dashes of colour. We've got our layer of glue and now I'm coming back in with that stone coloured paint and just blending it out around the photographs of my pets. Now this is the point where I panicked last time and uh, so this is what happened when I turned the video off and I really had given up on being able to do this page at this point so just removing some of the paint which you did see me do uh, on the video and then I started to think like, it's all a bit dark so I added a little bit of white and then I thought well where's all my colour gone? So I just added little dry brushed bits of colour back into the mix. So white to lighten and then adding some more streaks of the colours that I'd used previously. So just going with the pink and the blue and then little tiny dots of the burgundy. <laughs> I don't know if I can actually call this a technique. This is all about what art journaling is and that is playing and just trying to see how things work. Then I took my sandpaper and I gave it a really good sanding um, and that's as I started to think, you know what, I think this is going somewhere now. I think I like that look. I've got to build up those old layers that would have been on my plaster wall. Then I've got to reveal some of it and then I've got to add a bit more. And it was gradually coming together and I wanted to add some final details with some stamping. So I'm adding my paint to my rubber stamps. These are ones that I've had in my stock for ages. Uh, they're old Anna Griffin stamps and they're quite detailed which is quite nice it gives it a little bit of an old-fashioned feel and then I'm just using this slightly bigger stamp uh, to add a little bit of texture to those larger areas. So I'm not trying to be precise in fact I'm trying to be completely the opposite 
and uh, it's at that point that I think, do you know what, I quite like that, I think that looks like old plaster and that I've revealed these pictures of my pets beneath. I'm not really sure that I can call this a technique anymore, uh, but you can see all the things that I did to get to the point that I liked. And that's what art journaling is all about. It's about playing. It's about having fun with all the different mediums that you might have at your disposal. So I'm using some of that burgundy paint now, using a wet wipe on my finger just to blur some of that paint around the edges to create a slightly darker frame from uh, what I've got going on so far and it was at that point that I noticed this piece of paper lying beside me in uh, my sort of scrap storage and I've decided to use that as an extra uh, embellishment to my page and as usual I'm going to create some pockets so I want this to edge the underneath of the pocket so I've taken a strip of my dotty paper. I'm using some matte medium to attach it to the edge of the underneath page. You remember that I had two pages together to create this little pocket um, setup. So I'm adding about a one inch strip of the paper to each of those back pages. Just adding the gel medium with my finger as I'm getting lovely and messy. Although I'd say looking at my fingers, I've had lunch in between. <laughs> and uh, just trimming it to size. So what I want to do is just remove a little piece of my page to reveal that little strip underneath. So I'm just taking a ruler to mark the line and then I'm just going to cut along it with my scissors. And you can see as I do that I'm revealing that little strip of paper underneath. Looking a bit pristine for the rest of what I've got going on. So I'm just taking my scissors to rough up the cut edge of my page and also of that paper that I've attached to the page beneath. You might have one of those little tools that do that distressing. You can use that if you want to. And again, I'm just adding that burgundy shading to the edge of the page and this was my solution for making my paper not look quite so bright just adding a wash of white paint over the top and a little bit of that burgundy again to make everything match and then I'm going to repeat that process on the other page so distressing the edges first and adding a little wash of white paint to take the colour down and then back in with the burgundy around the edges slightly off camera there sorry about that and making sure that nothing's leaked onto the page in front it's always worth checking at that point just so that you've got time to use a wet wipe to get rid of anything that might have encroached on the page beneath decided I want to create two pockets so I've just divided my page into two sections and I'm going to be just building them up slightly so that I can fit my tags in between the two pages so I've roughly got a half inch border top and bottom and an inch in the center and I'm going to just um, be using that to build up some depth to my pockets now if you've watched my videos before you will have seen me do this from time to time. Uh, I do it on scrapbook pages um, and anywhere where I'm going to be adding a tag. You'll see that I've already marked where the edge of my page will come um, once these two pages are sandwiched together. So that's why my little strips only go so far across the page. And I'm using the old book pages in order to just give myself a little bit of a gap, a little bit of breathing space in order to be able to slide my tag freely in between the two pages. So once I was happy with those little three strips on each little pile, I'm gluing the two pages together. So make sure everything's pressed down well and at this point you might 
we want to let that dry and repeat the process on the second page. So everything is marked out and then I'm just trimming the strips to the right width and I'm adding three little strips to each pile. Now one thing you do want to be careful of when you finally sandwich the two layers together is that you're not using too much ink so that uh, it encroaches and squishes out and actually closes up some of your pockets. So at this point I'm just going to add glue along the very bottom not quite there yet so along the very edge of the page just to make sure that those two pages stay together should those stitches decide to come apart and then just a little bit which I'm smoothing flat along those two little piles of paper and then closing the two pockets together and that way I shouldn't get any glue actually seeping from each of those little piles of paper and that my pockets should remain open ready for me to insert my tags. So I can see already that I'm going to at some point have to remove a considerable amount of extra pages in order to have this book closed by the time I've finished uh, but it's not doing too bad at the moment so I'm going to have to think of some ideas where I use less bulk perhaps have pages where I haven't got any pockets so the journaling aspects of this page are going to be my title which is one of the family and I'm going to use a combination of stamps and these letters that I've cut out using my cry cut from the uh, accent paper that I'm using for this little um, page so I'm just gluing those into position across the two pages and then I'm going to be using some letter stamps to add the rest of my title. So I'm just getting out all of my little stamps and I'm going to stamp one of the using this little dotty alphabet so one of the family and that's what we all think about our pets so I thought it's quite appropriate and I'm just going around with my black pen now that everything is dry make sure everything is dry otherwise you will ruin your pens and I'm using quite a scribbly line um, in order to outline this page as everything is a little bit rough looking you don't really want everything to be pristine from this point forward so I'm literally just as if I was sketching around these letters just to bring them out a little bit and then I'm adding the same kind of sort of random lines around the edge of the page to add the names of my pets so I noticed that the back of the dotty paper that I've been using had the perfect blue to match my layout so I've stamped some more letters and I'm just cutting them out quite randomly I'm not trying to be too precise and I'm going to add them to the page so I've got Bart, Simba and Comet and then once everything is glued down and nice and dry I'm coming back in and adding a little bit more of that sketchy doodling around the edges of each of those letters so if you're a newbie to crafting you won't have heard of the term paddle punch but that's what I've used to um, create my little folk hearts and the fact that they're easily positionable means that I could make the most of my little scrap of dotty paper and I've managed to cut out some blue hearts and some spotty dotty hearts and I'm adding them to my page and then I'm going to sketch around them with my pen. So now I want to work on the tags that are going to pop into those pockets. So I've cut myself some blue card. It's a little bit bright compared to the layout. So you can always just lightly brush a white um, watered down acrylic across your cardstock just to lighten it slightly. So I'm just drying it in between layers and just adding that wash to both sides of my card. 
once it's dry I can start decorating my tags and this is where I decided to add my little piece of book page back into the mix so I'm just using a little strip of the book page and I'm going to add them to the top and bottom of my tags so I've literally just cut a strip of the book page folded it in half and then I'm going to wrap it across the top of my tag trim it to size and then re-round those corners and this will be the little portion of the tag that you'll be able to see sticking out of the side of the page once everything is finished so I'm using that burgundy paint again to create a little bit of an inked edge I'm just using my finger to do it so that I get a lovely random feel to the edge of the tag and then I'm repeating that painting process on the other side I've decided to use a little heart as the pull for my tag and you'll see that I actually use glossy accents on these later so that they're a little bit more sturdy and stand up to being pulled in and out of those pocket pages it's all about repeating the processes uh, that you've already done on the top page on your tags to make sure that everything matches in nicely so again with the random lines around the edge to frame the tag and you can see here that I want to attach uh, a picture and some journaling about each of my pets so I'm creating a little frame for the photographs that I want to use so I'm just cutting a piece of my dotty paper as a frame and then again following the format just rounding the edges of those photo mounts and I'm just using some sandpaper to distress the edges and then I'm attaching them in position on the front and the back of my tag again going around the edge with my pen and then I wanted to add some lines for my journaling so I'm just taking my Tim Holtz ruler and lightly drawing my pen lines in again I'm not trying to do a pristine line there are gaps in my lines just so that I can scribble over them again they're evenly spaced but they don't look um, neat and tidy they match the tone of the tag so I need to repeat that on the other side so the first line that I draw is actually sort of the margin just to make sure that it looks fairly even and then the Tim Holtz ruler is perfect for this because it's got the grid line I've got uh, about three-eighths of an inch between each of my journaling lines and again I'm coming back in and just scribbling them slightly and my tag is ready to add my photographs and my journaling but before I do that I'm going to add glossy accents to each of my hearts and let them dry so you can see here uh, this one's already journaled the one side of the heart is dry and uh, I'm glossy accenting the other one this one's got the photo added and the journaling and all the glossy accents are done so you can see gradually uh, my tags are filling up with photographs and journaling now my fourth tag is going to have a photograph of a pet that I had when I was a child which was a dog called Chater a beagle and my husband has a cat called Cindy and I'm going to put a picture of her and some journaling their photographs I haven't got to hand at the moment so that's why this tag is going to remain blank uh, ready for when I find those photographs so now a word of warning contrary to the look of this photograph this is a very messy page it created a lot of mess with paint and layers of paper and uh, all the bits and pieces that I used to put this together but it looks nice when it's done and I hope that uh, you like in particular that uh, transfer technique and uh, that you perhaps give it a go in your art journals uh, you might not want to create something exactly like this but uh, there may be little bits and pieces that you like you might just like to use the tags you might use the plaster technique you might not you might use the uh, photo transfer and uh, that's all good just as long as I've inspired you to give it a go and most of all that if it starts to go wrong don't worry can always take the pages out if you don't like them uh, but as I've done here I've 
uh, persevered and I've ended up with something that I quite like and a look that I was going for which is of old plaster so I'm adding my tags into my page you can see how those little hearts poke out and that you can see those book page edges and uh, there we have it a page that will remind my children in the future of the pets that they've had as they were growing up and have actually because Comet is still with us very much uh, uh, huge golden retriever who's not very golden and he is not very retrieving either you throw a ball for him and he will perhaps run after it and then leave it where it landed <laughs> so the book is building up nicely page four is complete and I will be back with you um, again one day in the future to share another page with you I love working in this journal but sometimes it does uh, get put to one side there's another little tip if you want to keep your book nice and flat I'm just putting some weight on the page so it flattens out a little bit ready for page five so here's a picture of some of those finished tags we've got a picture of Bart watching Ivan and Callum playing chess and considering Callum is 15 now uh, almost 16 in February um, you can see that these pictures were taken a little while ago and we've got Simba at the bottom looking very pristine he could go out in the rain and the mud and he would come back looking like this guaranteed definitely not a messy cat like his brother Bart and then finally there's a picture of Callum picking a comet to bring home to be part of our family so there you have it, a uh, finished page four in my art journal. Hope I've given you some inspiration. If you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, share, and uh, I look forward to sharing another page with you again soon. Until then, because I'm not sure how many more videos I'm going to get in before Christmas, I would like to say a big thank you to you for subscribing to me. I hit 4,000 subscribers the other day, so I'm really, really happy and uh, so glad that you are joining me and look forward to sharing lots of creativity with you after Christmas and I might be able to fit in a few videos before then. So a big Merry Christmas to you and your family and thank you for watching. links just to finish off with this one's to my 12 tags of 2014 series of videos I've got one more tag to make this year and that's one of the videos I hope to share with you uh, before Christmas alternatively you could pop along to my Etsy shop if you're looking for something a little bit more challenging to do I sell workshops over there this is the lovely pyramid mini and there happens to be a kit that goes along with that workshop if you don't want to cut out your own chipboard brand new uh, item to me this year I'm looking forward to sharing more kits with you in the new year and last but not least if you're looking for a last minute Christmas idea I've got two links here for you to try out with lots of Christmas card ideas and uh, I hope that your Christmas preparations are coming on and that you have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>